Hi, this is Professor Scott Norman from Pittsburgh State University, and we are in the Department of Automotive Technology in our fuels lab. And uh, part of this uh, class that we do, this uh, mobile fuels class, is we have our, our students do an activity where they uh, distill crude oil uh, to, to make uh, gasoline, straight run gasoline, and some diesel fuel. So they'll separate the, um, the, uh, the actual crude oil into its some, some, some simple fractions. And so, um, so we do this lesson as a simple way to uh, explain how distillation works and how, how from crude oil, you can separate out the different fractions to make gasoline or kerosene or jet fuel or diesel fuel or really whatever you want to. We're gonna make, uh, try to make some straight run gasoline and to make some, um, some uh, diesel fuel. So in order for that to happen, I gotta set up some, some equipment. So I'm kind of setting up the equipment before the students get here today. And so let me just explain what I have right here as far as to set this up. I have a ceramic heater, electric heater that I am I have that I'm going to um, heat up the, uh, the crude oil in. And I got a, a, a distillation uh, beaker is what I have. And so it's a round bottom um, beaker that um, holds 250 milliliters of uh, fluid. And it has a tube coming out the end. And so what I have already here is I have uh, 200 milliliters of crude oil that, um, that a student will, um, is from uh, Barton County uh, here in um, the area and uh, students will um, help me get crude oil on occasion um, and it'll last me quite a while if I only do 200 milliliters at a time. But I'm gonna take my oil and you wanna start off with a known quality of oil because you wanna know what percentage of your fuel. And again, crude oil is very runny, it's not like Mortar oil, uh, mortar oil is separated out of the crude oil, so it's um, it's very very runny and it's a very dark black gold is what they said, right? And so and so we're gonna let that settle in my um, in my uh, flask while I'm getting everything set up. But I have a cork in this, and what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna put this on the heater, and I'm gonna this cork is gonna go into a um, condenser. Is probably the best way to say that, and I'm going to stick this in where the tube is, you know, in the condenser, at least maybe uh, an inch or so, maybe two inches at the most, and get my heating mechanism set up really level, and I'm going to put this fixture on it to kind of hold it so I don't knock it over, because that would be very bad, because we're going to heat up this oil pretty good so okay so what I am gonna do next is I'm gonna put a um, oh it's a, it's a little piece of wire that we fabricated but what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put this um, jack chain in here and, it, and, and it's the jack chain um, starts kind of right here in the um, in the tower of the flask not down where the, um, the oil is boiling but this helps um, the oil um, condense and uh, help it uh, vaporize when it comes up in this taller area here. Okay, and so I got two different chains, and so that chain is too long. Let me go get my shorter chain. So, I'll be back. Okay, so I have a shorter chain I'm gonna put in now. And again, that helps the vapors from the oil come up and helps condense. And I may try to get two of them in there if I think they'll fit. Nope, only one's gonna fit. The reason why I can't go up too far is because I need to put a thermometer in there. And my thermometer uh, goes all the way up to uh, 700 degrees because that's what the uh, temperature of the oil could be as we're boiling it. Um, so right now I'm reading, you know, right around 70 degrees here at this spot here. 700 degrees is up, the, up towards the top of this. We're going to be boiling the oil to um, maybe 500 degrees uh, to, to distill the, um, the diesel fuel. But I'm going to set this up where my bulb for my thermometer, the top of the bulb of the thermometer is right at the bottom of this spot, right where my finger's at, right there, where this piece of um, tubing is coming out. So it's important to set the thermometer up at the right spot. All right, 
So what we're going to do is that we're going to heat up the oil. The oil is going to cook for a while. It's going to heat up, heat up, heat up, and then it's going to start boiling. As it starts boiling, the vapors are going to come up. The vapors can't come out because it has a cork, and the vapors are going to come through this um, this tube. It's going to go through my condenser. Now my condenser is. Um, I got a thermometer in there so I can kind of see what the temperature of the condenser is, but it's full of uh, ice and water, so I can get some of my ice out so you can see the ice on there. But it's ice water is all it is, so there's my ice, and it's filled up to the top with water, and I got a thermometer in there because I like to see what the temperature of it is, and you know, it's around 40 degrees right now. I have a, a spare one that I want to show you that it looks like, so you can see what all it is, is that you got yourself a... Um, so over here, you got yourself a tube, and the tube goes all the way from one end, and it comes out of the other side over here. So you have a tube that is in a big box that's full of water and ice and all this. So as the, um, as the, um, the vapors are going through the tube, uh, you know, the tube is angled down from the top to the bottom. It's going to flow downhill. Uh, the, 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 um, the, uh, the fuel vapors are going to condense, and as they condense, they're going to come out of this tube right here. And so this tube right here is where I'm going to capture my, uh, my fuels that are coming out. And so when I first heat this up to 100 degrees, I'm going to get very light fuels coming out, you know, maybe uh, some uh, butane, if butane is there, some, some uh, pentane. Uh, as it heats up more and more, then the hexane starts coming out and, and so forth. And so the fuel is going to start dripping out, and it's going to drip out clear. And so I have... Um, a, um, a beaker, you know, a 100 milliliter beaker. I'm not going to fill this thing full of uh, uh, gasoline. Maybe I'll be lucky to get 40, maybe 50 um, milliliters out of, out of this sample, just depending upon how much light gasoline I still have um, in this sample. But I have it in ice water, so there's ice water, water also in, in this guy right here, because what's happening is as that fuel's coming in, that, 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 that light in fuel, I want to protect my vapors. I don't want any of those vapors that just vaporize out at room temperature. And so I have a, um, you know, I have a piece of, um, uh, oh, uh, cork, we'll call it, um, on the top of this to try to help seal the top of it with some weight on it. So as the, um, as it, the, the distillation process is happening and it's dripping, I'm able to capture that. Now, at some point, I'm going to switch over from making uh, gasoline to diesel fuel. Maybe I do that at 350 degrees, maybe I do that at 375, maybe I do it at 400. I let the students typically decide when they want to stop making gasoline and when they start making diesel fuel. But at some point, I will swap this out. So I'll, I'll, I'll pop this out, I'll put a cork in it to make sure I'm not losing any of my um, vapors, and I'll put my new beaker underneath it, and I'll start collecting diesel fuel. And so. Um, uh, it's a fun project for the students. It's fairly easy to do. You do need a little bit of equipment to get it started, but um, once you got it set up, it's fun to see the students' uh, uh, reaction as far as how much gasoline do they think uh, we can make out of this uh, versus uh, diesel fuel. Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman, and I'm back with the lesson on uh, distillation. Uh, there was a wrinkle in our plan to do a distillation with our students today as uh, it got down to negative 15 degrees overnight and it's now a snow day. So for those of my international friends, it's a negative 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So pretty cold, hasn't been cold around this cold around here for the last uh, 30 years. So, um, so obviously no school, we call that a snow day. And so, um, we're going to do this uh, lesson remotely uh, without students. Anyway, um, as far as uh, crude oil, uh, there's been a lot of talk with my students about uh, uh, the the, uh, in, the internal combustion engine going away in uh, 2030, 2035. There's um, there's uh, uh, states in the United States. There's also countries that are saying that they're not going to allow any new sales of the internal combustion engine. And what's that going to do with uh, crude oil production, what's that going to do with refineries? Uh, obviously, we're not going to be using as much gasoline, but I just wanted to point out that that um, that there is literally thousands of different products uh, made from crude oil besides uh, gasoline and diesel fuel. And so when you start looking at our economy and, you know, we are the oil industry or the oil world right now as far as as far as uh, what we use you know you think about the computer and the headphone and my calculator and pretty much everything that I have around me 
is made out of some type of uh, crude oil basis as far as the synthetics clothes and stuff like that so plastics you know and so and so i don't see that industry uh, going away anytime soon obviously we're not going to be burning uh, hydrocarbons in our internal combustion engine that makes co2 that uh, produces a uh, global warming but obviously there's a lot of other um, uh, products that we can still use that crude oil for so on this uh, distillation process um whether i wanted to do this next slide Let's see if that i'm not sure what's there we go so um so so this is kind of how we have set up here so i have my 200 milliliters of crude oil in the uh, in the heating flask and i got a, a a cork on it with a thermometer the thermometer this particular picture is a little crude. That thermometer needs to be that just a little bit lower than where it's currently at, but that's okay. But as this uh, oil is heated up, you know it's going to start boiling, and so first it's going to, you know, it's it's going to be at 100 degrees, and then it's going to slowly warm up to. Well, at least I, I'm looking at it right here at, at the thermometer. Um, the the actual vapors coming up is going to be at 100 degrees, and then it's going to go up slowly to 120 degrees, and then it's going to slowly go up to 150 degrees. And so what we'll see is that even though this oil is boiling, the amount of vapors coming off of it, the um, all the light in stuff. So you know when you start looking at uh, the light hydrocarbons that are in the uh, oil. That could maybe be some butane, that could be some pentane, you know, anything that's under uh, 100 degrees of um, the actual boiling point. That's going to come off first, and then the heavier hydrocarbons is going to come off next, you know, the, the C6s and the C7s and the C8s and so on. And so, so they're going to, the, the gases are going to come up, and then you're going to go down my uh, tube here to the, uh, through the condenser that I have the, uh, the ice and the, uh, the water in, and those vapors are going to uh, condense into a liquid form. And then it's going to drip out into my uh, graduated cylinder here. And so we're going to be able to measure how much uh, gasoline we comes out. And then at some point, we're going to take this uh, graduated cylinder and we're going to replace it with another one to start, to, to start uh, collecting the, uh, the heavier hydrocarbons. And so, you know, it's a it's fairly simple process. You know, I, I got a fairly fancy condenser, but there's a lot of different types out there uh, that you could use. Um, I wanted to show you next on here. So when you start looking at uh, the distillation of crude oil, you know, uh, under 90 degrees, you know, room temperature, I typically call that, you're gonna have butane, propane, ethane, methane, all the lighter uh, hydrocarbons, anything that's lower than a C4 hydrocarbon uh, it is, is gonna come out, uh, you know, at room temperature. And so, so when we start looking at the gasoline, we typically start collecting that at around 90 degrees uh, so right now my oil is at 70 degrees, and so I, as I heat it up to 90 degrees, you know, 96, 97 degrees, uh, uh, if there's any pentane in it, then that's going to start coming out right away as far as uh, the actual vapors. And so the oil is going to be boiling when the vapors in that, uh, in that um, flask gets up to 100 degrees. If there's any pentane in it, it's going to start coming out right away. Now, now my oil has been around for a few years now, so my guess is that probably all my C5s have long evaporated, even my uh, C6s may have evaporated already. So I'm not expecting to get any drops of fuel in my graduated cylinder until way above 100 degrees. It may be 120 degrees, it may be 130 degrees, I don't know, but, but we're gonna watch and see when the first drop comes in and that tells me um, uh, what's my lightest gasoline I have in this crude oil? And, 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 and we say that, you know, as far as good quality gasoline, it's on the light side. The heavier gasoline, well, if it's more BTUs per gallon, we'll say, but it's not a better quality fuel by any means. So, so, so we're going to do straight run gasoline. So, so typically, you know, they'll at the, uh, at the uh, refinery, you know, anywhere between 90 to 200, 20 degrees uh, as far as the vapor temperature coming off that, um, that boiling oil. You can get anywhere between C5 and C10 hydrocarbons. Uh, you know, we, we would call that light gasoline. You know, gasoline we would definitely want to be using in the wintertime when it's <laughs> negative 15 degrees here in uh, Kansas. Uh, starting at around 220 degrees, you know, give or take a little bit, uh, we have this stuff that's called a naphtha, which is heavy gasoline if you want to call it that you know a lot of people will 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 actually combine the c5 all the way up to c12 and just call it gasoline but here i broke it out in between um 
light gasoline and heavy gasoline. And so the heavy gasoline, you know, could go all the way up to, let's say, 315 degrees. So my uh, C10 and my C12s. And so, so the key is, is that this nap there right here, I could put this into the um, straight run gasoline, uh, maybe in the summertime where I want a little bit heavier gasoline uh, on it. Uh, it could handle it. Uh, uh, I'm worried about the volatility and the evaporation of my smaller, lower hydrocarbons. And, and plus, again, uh, th that has more uh, BTUs per uh, gallon. Uh, starting around 315 degrees, give or take, you know, uh, then we start collecting the C12 hydrocarbons, which is the uh, kerosene. And so that goes from C12 up to uh, C15. Uh, if I get above 450 degrees, well, then I'm starting to collect diesel fuel, uh, which is in between the uh, C15 and the C18 range of hydrocarbons. And the lubricating oils, which is, um, you know, getting pretty hot now. So the vapors coming off that boiling crude oil is at 650 degrees around 800 degrees is my C18 to C20 hydrocarbons, which is, you know, lubricating oils, motor oils, and stuff like that. So, so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna heat up our, our flask and we're gonna measure the temperature of the vapors coming off. And so we're gonna collect anything that we can, you know, uh, any, 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 any of the lighter stuff, C5, C6, if there is anything in there. And at some point we're gonna switch over to a diesel fuel. So maybe we switch it all over at 315, uh, maybe we switch it over to 300, maybe we switch it over to 325. It just depends on how close we're watching that thermometer. And really, um, you know, uh, it's, um, you know, we could take some of this kerosene that we're making, you know, in the wintertime and, and put it over here to this diesel fuel. So, so maybe I'm going to stop at, I don't know, 300, we'll say, and I'm going to collect up to 300 uh, uh, degrees for a gasoline, switch over to diesel fuel, and so I'm gonna put this kerosene into the diesel fuel to make a, a more number one diesel fuel, I'm gonna call that, uh, for the winter time. So, so, so we have a little bit of volatility on our diesel fuel. We're worried about you know, the uh, diesel fuel gelling up when it's negative 15 degrees around here. And so, so again, depending upon how I cut my fuel, my fraction really depends upon what the, um, what the uh, refinery wants to do. Do they want to make more gasoline? Do they want to make more gas uh, diesel fuel? Do they want to separate out this kerosene for maybe some heating oil? Um, uh, I could go to the hardware store and, and I could actually buy NAPTA, you know, C10 to C12 hydrocarbons, which is used as like a solvent. So I could use, do that uh, if I wanted to make that uh, at the refinery. When, when you're looking at a, um, a barrel oil, what you have to realize is that we're doing this process right here, where we're taking, let's say one barrel of oil, you know, 42 gallons, we'll call that, of crude oil going in. And, and the key is, is that when you look at how much gasoline is in that 42 ga gallons of um, oil, you, you don't have a lot. You know, you're looking at, you know, uh, less than 5% gasoline. Uh, jet fuel, diesel fuel, they have it combined, it's one area right here, you know. You're looking at you know to a little bit more but again it's it's right around about five percent so the bottom line is is that there's not a lot of um so out of that 200 milliliters of crude oil i have i'm gonna get you know about this amount of um of gasoline and diesel fuel so it's not a lot now if you take your your uh, your oil to a, to a to a modern refinery and they go through all the modern refinery process of uh, you know cracking the um the, uh, uh, the oil and, and hydrogenating it, then the percentages are a lot different. And so, you know, when you go to a, a, a modern refinery, you know, you're gonna get uh, a lot more gasoline out of your oil. In fact, if you put 42 gallons in, you're gonna get, actually get 44 gallons out because they're, they're adding hydrogen to the, um, to, the oil, to the oil. Think of it like popcorn. You know, you put a small amount of popcorn in the microwave and it comes out a lot, bigger volume is what it is. Well, we're adding hydrogen uh, to the oil and it kind of, you know, kind of puffs it out and makes it more. And so we're actually getting more oil out. Um, but when you look at those percentages of 44 gallons coming out and, you know, half of it is gasoline. So, you know, so obviously that's in the United States is a big deal. If you're over in Europe, maybe you're going to want to make more diesel fuel. And so you're going to take a little bit of this gasoline production and make it over here. And again, that's the refinery. That's going to be their uh, choice as far as uh, what they want to do with their oil. Do they want to make more gasoline with it? Do they want to make more diesel fuel with it? 
And so uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the distillation of, of this oil. We started the heating process for the oil, so I turned the, um, the, uh, the electric heater on a position of four, so not very hot, and it's been on for about five minutes now, and I can see that the oil is starting to, to boil just a little bit. I can start seeing the liquid start to move. My thermometer, if you take a look at my thermometer, it's reading oh, 75, 76, 77 degrees, somewhere around there. So it just started to rise. So it did start at 75, and so it's slowly starting to go up. Uh, I got my uh, bath of ice water down to about, uh, about 40 degrees. Uh, my graduating cylinder here that uh, it's empty. Um, I have an ice bath there that's around 40 degrees also. And so all we're doing is waiting for the vapors to start to come out and see um, what the first drop is. So, so we'll watch very carefully over here to see when the first drop comes out. And when the first drop comes out, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna look and see what the temperature is. And so that's gonna be the start of the, of the actual distillation process of collecting gasoline. The thermometer is reading a little bit over 100 degrees right there. So maybe 105 degrees, maybe 110 degrees. And I have nothing coming out of the, um, nothing coming out of the cylinder yet. So I know that I don't have any pentane coming out. Uh, but we'll watch carefully because as this is going up to, um, it's maybe going up to 125. I'm going to turn down the heat just a little bit. We're going to watch and see when our first drop is. I'm currently at 150 degrees. So there's my 150 degree mark right there. And I can see vapors and condensation happening inside my tube right here. But nothing's coming out of, into my graduating cylinder quite yet. So again, I knew that a lot of my light ends were uh, already gone because I had to sample crude oil for a while. But at 150 degrees, there's still no dripping coming out of my cylinder. So I'm watching my cylinder right here and I'm seeing when I see the first drop and, and I got my cylinder in an ice bath to help keep those, uh, those uh, vapors. If there was any um, low volatility vapors from uh, evaporating, um, <laughs> there probably isn't any in the sample, but again, we don't have any dripping quite yet. As soon as it starts dripping, it's gonna get going pretty quick. If I take a look at my my th thermometer over there it's about 175 is where we're currently at and we still don't have anything at all so again this is a pretty heavy sample of crude oil again if i was pulling this out of the ground i would be um, uh, again this is like a field test they would do they would do real quick see hey how much of this crude oil is heavy versus light and this particular uh, sample it's uh, Pretty heavy crude oil. Again, there's not a lot of uh, light in gasoline uh, in this. Oop, I just saw a drip. I just saw one little drip. See if we can try to get another one going. Oh, another drip right there. And we're right at about a little bit under 100. Let me see. I'm going to say one, 190. Oop, there goes another drip. So you can start seeing another drip there. So at 190 was our first drip on that. Here's a close up of the flask boiling. You can see that the fluid in there, the oil in there is boiling ever gently. And we're measuring the temperature of the vapors inside the tube. And you can kind of see where the position of the, of the um, thermometer is to the tube that's running to the um, condenser. If I take a look up and see what my temperature of my thermometer is, you can see it's a little bit above 200, so maybe 210, somewhere in there. Okay, you can take a look at it and see the condenser, and you can see the ice water going through the condenser. So you can see it going down through the tube the condenser so my thermometer on the condenser is reading around 40 degrees so a nice bath of ice then as it's coming out of the tube and coming to my graduated cylinder i look down here and see where we're at so we can start seeing a little bit oh we can see a drip there and we started seeing a little bit of uh, gasoline being accumulated there another drip there and I have it going kind of slow right now, so I don't want to heat up the, the temperature of the oil too much where it goes from 200 to 300 within just a couple minutes. I want it to, you know, slowly go through there. And so, so I, I know that I, if I have 200 milliliters, if 
that if I get to the 10 milliliter mark, that's going to be uh, 5%. Uh, if I go to the um, the, the 20 mark, the, two, the 20 milliliter mark, that's going to be 10% uh, uh, of my initial um, sample of 200 milliliters. And so I see it can see a little drip. So, so my guess is, is that we don't have a lot of gasoline in this particular sample. That we're going to get a, a pretty small uh, sample of gasoline because all the light ends have evaporated off pretty much. Again, we didn't get our first drip until, until 190 degrees. And so um, we'll take this up um, to maybe you know somewhere a little bit above 300 degrees and then we'll switch over and start collecting uh, diesel fuel. Oh, there's another drip. So again, we got it going very slowly right now. See the dripping coming out of the, the tube there. And we got the, um, we got something on the top of it to try to help keep any light in vapors, if there was any, from escaping up. Oh, there was another drip right there. So we're at about at 250 degrees right now. And if I'm looking to see how much we have, we have probably about, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, I would say two, we're gonna call it three milliliters so far. So my dripping is getting kind of faster now. I'm seeing it go drip, 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 drip. So you can see it dripping. So at 250, it's, it's, it's going a little bit faster now. So I'm starting to get into, the, let's say <coughs> naphtha, <coughs> my naphtha fuel, heavy gasoline is what that is. And so you can see it's starting to drip faster and faster and faster at this point. My, um, oh, I'm getting closer to 300 degrees is where, where I'm at right now. Uh, and so as I got to 300 degrees, again, we're seeing it going drip, 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 quicker and quicker and quicker. So I'm going to say at, um, at 250 degrees, we had maybe, I don't know, three milliliters of gasoline slash naphtha on it um when we get to um we're a little bit over 300 degrees right now so at 300 degrees oh uh, maybe five, we'll call that five milliliters so we're going to say five milliliters are at 300 degrees i turned up the heat just a little bit you can, but you can see it again dripping more and more and more and so so, you know, once we get above 300 degrees, you know, well, now we, you know, start getting into other ranges, you know, we start maybe collecting a little bit of kerosene here. Uh, we'll keep going a little bit hotter on this and um, see how much, see how much a light, uh, light kerosene or uh, heavy gasoline, whatever you want to call it, um, how much we could actually get. Now we're at about at uh, 375 degrees. And I'm right around my uh, 10 millimeter mark. Uh, and so you can see it dripping pretty quick. Drip, 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 drip. So at 375, it'd probably be a good time to switch over. So we're gonna make the big switch now over and starting to collect um, uh, diesel fuel, we'll call that. So what I gotta do is I gotta come over here and I gotta get this, do a really quick change over. Uh, do this quick without losing anything. Uh, Ah, there we go. Didn't lose anything at all. There we go. So now what I'm doing is I'm collecting my diesel fuel. So we switched over at three, 375 degrees. And so you can see that I, I got about 10 milliliters of uh, gasoline slash naphtha there. And now we started to collect, now we're collecting some diesel fuel here. And so we're going to let this boil for a while and see uh, how much how much diesel fuel we can get. And so I don't need to put the diesel fuel in a cold cold water because again the vapors are heavy enough that they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, vaporize at um, at a room temperature. And so we'll set this over to the side and we'll watch this for a while. So our thermometer is really close to uh, 450 degrees right now. So we'll take a sample. 450 degrees kind of go down and you can take a look at the, the I don't know if you can see the gases at all in the um, in the flask uh, you can see some condensation happening where the thermometer is at you can see the bulb of the thermometer in relationship to the tube that's going to the condenser you can see the uh, jack chain in there and 
Again, the uh, oil itself in there, it's boiling. So that oil is a lot hotter than 450 degrees. It's just the vapors coming off of it, or that's where they're at. So if I come over here now and take a look at my, my, um, come take a look at my, how much I'm coming out of my condenser. So you can see the dripping coming in. Drip, 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 drip. Drip, 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 drip. Hey, look at that. We're already over 10 milliliters. We're actually about at 15 milliliters right now. So at 400 degrees, we collected about five milliliters of what I'm calling diesel fuel. At 450 degrees, we select, we collected um, uh, at, at 10, uh, about 10 milliliters, a little bit over that, but just a little, barely over 10. And see, if you look at it, we're dripping really good right now. Drip, 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 drip. We're gonna get to that 20 milliliter mark pretty soon. So, so again, we're collecting a lot of good diesel fuel right now, right in the range of uh, 450 degrees. I could have separated out the kerosene if we felt like we needed to, but I think that we would have got so, so little that um, it's easier just to put a little of that kerosene in the, uh, the light kerosene went into the uh, gasoline and the heavy kerosene went into the diesel fuel. So you can see that it's dripping at a pretty good rate right about now. Okay, we're right out at about 500 degrees and we collected around, uh, it looks like at least 25 milliliters so far of uh, kerosene slash diesel fuel. Right now, uh, 450 degrees, you know, that's in a good range for a diesel fuel at that point in time. So uh, at uh, 475, we only had 20 milliliters. So we're doing a pretty good job. You know, we're getting, we're getting at least five milliliters of fuel for every, you know, quarter, uh, you know, 25 degrees of increase. And so we're gonna be hitting 30, milli, 30 milliliters here before so long, but you can see it's dripping. Dripping at a pretty good rate right now. You know, drip, 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 drip. So again, at 500 degrees, we're gonna call that 25 milliliters. Okay, we're at about 550 degrees as far as temperature, and we're right around the 40 milliliter mark for uh, collecting our, uh, our diesel fuel. So, you know, we're at uh, 550, so we have plenty of room to grow. You know, we go all the way up to 650 as far as the diesel fuel, getting into the heavy diesel range. So again, we're still dripping, drip, 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 drip. So far, we've been heating this uh, oil for about 45 minutes, you know, slowly heating it up, just watching it drip to try to collect as much as we can. So so we'll keep going until our, uh, uh, a little bit further until we get uh, tired and decided to collect enough Okay, we are currently at 575 degrees Fahrenheit and we're right around 50 milliliters of diesel fuel collected. So that's 25% of our, uh, our sample right now is um, kerosene slash uh, diesel fuel mix. And we still have some more to go. So um, while we're um, waiting for this to, to go through this, uh, our students uh, that are taking this uh, class, um, remember that uh, page nine of your uh, laboratory manual in the back of your book, page nine, uh, this is uh, lab one, where uh, on page nine, there's a, a sheet for you to fill out uh, in relationship to uh, all the observations that we're making on this particular sample today. Okay, so it looks like we're at around uh, 580 or so degrees Fahrenheit. So we've been boiling this oil for about one hour. So that's about what we do in the classroom as far as um, the amount of time that we have. And so one more time, we'll take a look at it and you can see that there's um, condensation going on. You, know, you can see that happening inside the tube. And um, that oil is extremely hot. So, you know, you can see it boiling really good there now. It's boiling really good. I cranked up the heat at the very end here, and so it's boiling really, really good right now. So if I come over and, you know, follow the tube down through the ice bath, gotta go slow so you guys don't get dizzy. Then it's coming down through out of my condenser and then my container. I could take a look at it and see that I have still some dripping going on. And we have right around 
it'll probably be 65 milliliters before I'm all said and done. And so uh, that's quite a bit of a diesel fuel out of there. It's all said and done. You see it's still dripping a little bit. I did want to point out one thing to you guys, and that is if I move this over a little bit to my previous sample, this is what we did last semester. And it looks like I got about 20 milliliters of gasoline and I got 45 milliliters of a diesel fuel. Again, and if you can compare that to, this is the sample that we just did today where I only have 10. You know, they're like, well, why is the difference there? Why did I only get 10? And uh, turn that around, there we go. And last semester I got 20. Well, again, that's, <laughs> That container is uh, six months old. I opened it up probably a few times. So again, any of the light ends from room temperature is evaporating. Plus, uh, you know, we, uh, we uh, stopped collecting uh, gasoline at uh, 375 degrees. Maybe on this uh, 2020 sample right here, we stopped at 400, you know? So, you know, the refinery uh, in 2020 wanted to make more gasoline. Well, now Scott Norman's uh, uh, refinery in uh, 2021 wanted to make more diesel fuel. And then it's like, well, why did I collect less diesel fuel over here on this one? Well, again, I may have I had the temperature too hot and it went up too far. Uh, we maybe ran out of time. You know, this is not a very precise measurement that I'm doing here. This is just kind of giving examples to students as far as how, how, how distillation uh, works and how, um, how we could uh, separate uh, the um, the, uh, the uh, different fractions out of crude oil. We'll take a sample one more time of our, and yep, we got above 65 right now. So we're looking at maybe 66, 67. I'm gonna turn off the heater and let that thing come up a little bit. My guess is when I'm all said and done, I'm probably gonna stop it right at 70, um, probably 70 milliliters at 600 degrees just to have a, a round, easy number to, try to calculate. Students will ask an awful lot that, hey, I made some gasoline now. You know, I got uh, 20 milliliters from last semester, 10 milliliters from this semester. If I save this up, can I run this in a modern gasoline in the engine? And the answer is no. The reason is, is that this is straight run gasoline and that's before any uh, refining processes, before any alcohol add is added, uh, any processes to make this a high octane gasoline. So today's engines require a fairly good high octane gasoline, you know, 87 octane at least. Uh, straight run gasoline, <laughs> if you're lucky, maybe 30 octane. It's too explosive. Uh, you start to compress this a little bit and it's going to detonate before the spark plug uh, fires. And so, so we say that the straight run gasoline, typically you're not gonna be able to run on a modern uh, vehicle. The diesel fuel, however, though, you should be able to run this in a, um, a diesel engine and everything should be fine. Uh, the cetane number may not be very high, but, but it, it should run it. This is Professor Scott Norman. And hopefully you enjoy the uh, video lesson today. If you're looking for more automotive educational videos, uh, please subscribe to my Professor Pintane YouTube channel. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.